Okay guys, so this is my review on the 130 amp um, MIG welders that are on eBay or, you know, I think this is from Catch of the Day, Deal of the Day or something. Um, Power Dynamics, but they're all pretty much the same. <clears throat> Straight off the bat, this one was better than a lot of them. This one actually has a variable wire feed um, straight up there. Um, and it has four voltage settings which regulate the wire feed as well. You've got super low, so to do um, sheet metal like uh, welding up car doors and things like that using really thin body steel. Um, it's great for that. And then you go right up to the thickest, right up to the highest setting. So you've got one, two, uh, how does it work? One, two, three, and four. Yeah. So you go on four, which is your highest setting, and it'll quite easily do this uh, eight mil um, stuff, as you can see from if you've watched my other videos on this car. Um, the roll cages and things like that. Ignore the welding. That's my, just my bad welding. It's not the welder's fault. It's not the welder's fault. I can't weld. But uh, yeah, so you can see you're right down, like even this really thin mesh. Um, you know, it still does a good job on that. <clears throat> even this super thin, this is just um, gal tin, like, you know, tin can tin thickness. And it still does a pretty decent job on that water pipe, hardened water pipe, even on gal, um, gal fittings, so yeah, um, I even managed to weld a half inch rod to body panel successfully with it, so uh, you can see, I won't bore you with the details of how to weld, because as you can tell I can't, but um, you know, it obviously does weld. Just about out of wire too actually. Um, the tips are it actually comes with a couple of replacement tips. They're a standard size, which is good because some of them aren't. But these ones are actually a standard size, so they're quite easy. I've got uh, 6, 8, 0.6, 0 0.8, and 0.9 mil um, tips here. That's the bag that came with the plasma cutter, so it's handy for all that sort of stuff. Um, it comes with, I probably should have got this beforehand. I'll see if I can quickly find it. It comes with something resembling a welding helmet. Um, and I say resembling a welding helmet because that's about all it does. And something resembling a wire brush that's kind of like four strands of wire and this little tiny, it's a plastic handle thing. I probably can't find it now. It's got like four strands of wire for the wire brush and it's got this little tiny um, metal nib on it about the size of that actually that's supposed to be a hammer this is the welding helmet it comes with uh, it's not I mean yeah see where they've put those two bars well guess where they go when you put it over your eyes yeah so that was what I thought out. one thing I do like about it it actually the camera fits in here perfectly so where's the sun I'll see if I can get to the sun and I'll uh, show you it is legitimately dark enough so you can use it perfectly fine as a welding helmet so there's the sun there so you can see it's um it is dark enough yeah, it's just really awkward as I said it's good for using for the camera because it, it'll sit because it's square it sits down you can put the camera in it um, it's handy for a second person obviously or if it's something up out of the way you need to get in there other than that a normal manual helmet of course you guys know all this stuff, but you know, the good old fashioned $20 super cheap um, helmets are uh, every bit better. <laughs> um, I've got one of the, uh, when they came on sale, uh, like 80 bucks or something at um, Repco, one of the electronic ones that you put at the, you get the uh, solar panels on there and it auto darkens. Which I can't always use because if I'm, say for example, the shed's quite dark, if I'm welding in there, this won't work. It's not bright enough. I need to use my manual one. So yeah, I guess different helmets for different occasions. <coughs> um, the clamp is reasonable. Um, it's not great. I mean, you can see it's starting to bend, 
now. But if you look, that's the original wire that came with it. That was a five kilo spool. So that spool is empty. It's done a lot of work. Um, I mean, I'll change it out, absolutely, for the sake of a few dollars, but it's not too bad. The grip is really nice and comfy. Um, the trigger's really responsive. It's actually got somewhere to hang, which is handy. The nib, or the tip, um, that literally just pulls off, and the tip get inside. That's quite easy to get to. Um, the top locks down, obviously. You've got the adjustable tension there for how tight you want to feed the wire through. You need it cranked down pretty tight with these cables, because they do twist up and they're not great but it does has jammed up on me a couple of times but it's been pretty good it's got a nice long lead the extension lead on this thing is um two meters which for a cheap welder is pretty decent uh it doesn't come with any instructions or anything like that which is kind of like oh here it is here Ugh. here's the uh the welding hammer or whatever you want to call it you can see it's got like 15 brushes on there in this thing so yeah that's not go and buy one of these go and buy a wire brush and one of these um, I got this on deal of the day for 169 bucks I think it was um, now it supposedly has a I think it's a 15 minute duty cycle 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off, but I've welded on flat out uh, for a good at least half an hour and um, not had any problems with it. It's got a reasonable size cooling fan, fairly quiet as you can tell. Here I'm tripping over the power leads. Uh, and, you know, it blows through that way. It's got a fairly big fan, it's a metal blade fan. <coughs> um, locks down, quite compact. It has got, uh, yeah, so 20 volt must be the low, or well, 30 volts, yeah, 20 volts the low, 30 volts the high. Um, doesn't really tell you a lot. Maximum will draw 17 amps, which I don't believe because I can't use that on, well, yeah, I guess 17 amps at 30 volt. Yeah, actually, that would be right. On maximum, I can weld on the extension lead on this. Um, my stick welder, even on minimum, I can't weld, even if I plug it into the house because I've got such shitty power here. So, yeah, oh, that would be right, 60, yes, yeah, 60 amps, 17 volts, what? Isn't it? 120 amp, ah, uh, okay. Wait, what? This says 30, but I don't know. Yeah, 35% cycle. <coughs> so it's three and a half minutes in every ten supposedly but it runs for a lot longer than that it's got a pretty big fan but yeah um, for the price I've been quite happy with it I can't uh, can't really fault it uh, my welding is the biggest problem with it it's not the machine <laughs> so yeah if you're looking at a cheap MIG um, that'll do 90% of the things you want it to do for the average backyard person grab one of these we've got a spare couple hundred bucks you can't go wrong and most of the things are standard, like these you can actually buy on eBay, whereas a lot of the other ones you can't. You can buy the casings, you can buy the tips, obviously the wire you can buy anyway, um, the gasless MIG wire. But yeah, so give it a go guys, and um, once again, if you've got any comments or anything, leave them down, down below there, and uh, I'll get back to them when I see them. So, uh, got any questions, let us know, otherwise I'll catch you later, bye.